Oh, hi everyone. Hi. Hi. You went today and got chicken feed. Chicken and feed, yeah. And she hasn't taken it out yet. No, still in the back. Still back there. And it smells like chicken feed. So it smells like chicken feed. Which is really strong. <laughs> Very strong chicken feed. So it's layer layer feed for my layers and then starter starter feed for the starters. Yeah. Because I've got a whole bunch of turkeys and all the eggs, all the chicks that I hatched with the incubator. And yeah, I have turkeys laying on more eggs. I mean, those turkeys want to, yeah, they like being broody. Oh. I took a lot of the eggs away because I didn't think they were all fertile when I candled them. So anyway. So you, so you mean there's more, might be more little birdies? Yeah, I'm just letting them lay because they want to. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot in here. We have had some pretty warm weather. Yeah. This whole of, week has been. Kind of unusually because we're, what, four days or five days of 90 already? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's a little ahead of schedule. Normally, we get our 90s in July and eh, sometimes into August, but yeah. generally July, July. mid-July. But it's a little early this year. Yeah, typically it's 75 right now is, is like our average. And we're running almost 20 degrees above that. So. And not only that, it's dry out. So we haven't had any substantial rain since that four tenths. Well, actually, was... all of May, we only had eight tenths of an inch. And normally we get like three, three and a quarter. Oh, really? So we're, we're kind of behind. But uh, the old school thinking is, you know, a year normally averages out. So we've had a lot of rain this spring, so I figured we'd get a dry spell at some point. And it happens to be happening right now. Yeah. So the reason we're in here is we're gonna go check a field that we mowed of hay, first cutting grass hay to see if it's ready to bale. They raked it yesterday and we didn't think it was ready to go. So um, we just went and hit it. Um, they hit it? it? We just went and rolled it again. They rolled it. With a rake, and we're gonna go take a look at that. And then I wanted to take a look at the field that we're gonna leave for rye seed, a field of cereal rye. So we're gonna go do that a minute, and we're gonna take you along. <laughs> First field. Wait, this is really, there's a little field behind the woods there, but. So when you're always checking hay, I was always told you always reach underneath and then you pull out underneath. And... But you said he just rolled it, so... So it seems to be, well I rolled it half hour ago or so. This is grassy stuff too. But yeah. Oh, there's a tough spot right there. Right there. I can feel it. But that's a piece of alfalfa yeah. right there. But I'd say it's almost ready to go, maybe another half hour. Okay. How many bales do you think we'll get off this? I don't know. Put your estimates in the comments. And then maybe I'll let you know at the end. <laughs> maybe we'll let you know. To help you out a little bit, it's about 20 acres, so. Oh, yeah, there you go, 20 acre field. Over here I saw something. There's wild roses. They're starting to blossom. It's kind of windy. Oh boy, that's poison ivy. Yeah, well, you need to get out of there. I'll be okay. Ooh, those are little. Yeah, I'm keeping those. Oh, they smell good. We stopped and got a uh, few rose petals off of another bush that I've been keeping an eye on. But I'm going to keep getting some of these because I'm going to infuse these in some oil. I'm going to get these ones. That smells so good. It does? Mm-hmm. You don't like this smell? These are little yeah. wild roses. And I'm gonna get these petals. Oh, that smells well, so good. What do you do with rose petals? We're gonna infuse them in some oil and put them in a salve. Oh, for what? Or drink them as a tea. For what? For your hands. Oh, okay. There's a see the deer walk through here. Here's a deer path, yeah. yeah. This heavily deer area. Go into the field here. This is our rye. 
Oof, this could make me itchy. Look at so, you. So yeah, this is our cereal rye that we say we're saving this field for seed. And you can see right now that it's pollinating. Here, see this? And, uh, yeah, it just tells you that this variety is a tall variety. Yeah. And it's up. But we thought Six, we would seven take, foot. Thought we would take a look at it just to see. But yeah, this could uh this sure could use maybe a drink too. But it's Cracking ground, and this isn't even clay. No. See what I see? Ladybugs all over this. Oh. Wonder, there's one there and there and there. Yeah. What do they do? Oh. Eat the bugs? The aphids off of it? Maybe. Yeah. Let's see something. So, so yeah, it's, uh, this is what we're saving for straw and for seed and I just thought I would get a look. I wanted to look at it before we, uh, before it starts going down, because uh, once it gets pollinated and the seed, the head start filling the seed, it seems like rye likes to fall on it. So yeah, stems are so. But there'll be a lot of straw here. I mean, it's... yeah, there will be. So. And do you will you be coming in here and spraying it? Some people think that um, straw is sprayed. For weeds um, and things no i um very rarely does people spray wheat for weeds i just it happens every now and then but it's not a widespread practice um the reason maybe it depends on where you're at and how tall well dep the reason some people around here might spray their wheat for weeds is to get it through the combine it's very hard to get if you got really if your wheat is really weedy and green green weeds it just don't it, it don't combine very well at all and it's very hard on the combine so, so then somebody might come in and spray it with roundup to kill everything but it's not necessarily for the wheat it's to kill the weeds yeah so it goes through the combine um some people spray their rye and wheat for weeds before they like when it's growing but it just depends on who it is and when they do it so. but we won't be spraying. no no this is really this field is actually very clean, so there's no weeds in it to mount anything, no. so, so it'll do quite well. So. Well, this is how many rose petals I got. There's two different varieties. There's the pink kind, and then there's the little white ones. But this is all I got. I didn't want to, like, burden Kevin and have him um, pick with me just because I know he's got things to do. So I'm going to put these on my um, curing station and let them dry. I'm not going to put these in the dehydrator because they're so delicate. But oh, if you could just smell these, they're so nice. Let me show you my curing station. It's over here. So I have this little greenhouse that someone sent me last year. Uh, and I converted it kind of into a curing station. So it just zips open and close. It has four shelves. And I can just um, put all my um, herbs and everything that I'm curing, um, which I'm going to be using for medicinal purposes and I don't want to dry it with um, my my food dryer, which um, puts heat to it. So this is what I'm doing. There's um, lemon balm here. This can probably come out. And then I have, um, these are peonies that are just opening of my own. These are rose bushes. This is rose petals of my own. Mine are just starting to open as well. I did some a few days ago and that's how big they end up being. Um, more peonies. The smell in here is lovely. And then I have some herbs down there. But what's actually drawing moisture out is this little thing called a dehumidifier. It's got a little bit of water in the bottom already. And this just um, quietly runs all day and night and it just draws the moisture right out without needing to without needing to add heat to it or anything so so that's my little curing station and these little rose petals are gonna go in there next definitely got windy um, so I'm at the field where we're bailing Kevin's having some issues 
because um, we don't have a shield. What's that called? He got it plugged once. Actually, he might be plugged right now. I'm walking over to him a minute. There's supposed to be a shield um, that comes down. Well, I'll show it to you so I don't have to explain it. But anyways, the shield broke and it kind of just rusted off. <laughs> um, the baler is 20 some years old, so it, it definitely is seen its better years, but Ethan was gonna make a new um, shield and hasn't got around to it. So the shield helps prevent the hay from, um, it kind of keeps it down so it doesn't fluff up and plug. And so he's been plugging it looks like. How's it going? It's going. <laughs> I think something broke. Uh oh. The chain? No. Oh. There might be a key. A line. finger? Oh. Is it did it stop spinning or? Yeah, it's not. Well, that's because it's so full. I didn't give you any, I didn't bring you any water. Too bad we don't have reverse on it. Oh, bailers aren't made to go on reverse. No. Sure would be handy sometimes. Alright, what's turn it now, man? Where are we supposed to be looking? Alright. So turn it way down. The gears? Yeah. yeah. He thinks it's something more serious. Alright, go ahead and do it. The key that goes oh, so the shaft is not moving down that shaft. Can't even see it. Oh, it's just spinning. Nope. Want me to turn it? Hold on. Yep, there's the key. Ah. I'm right this way at home. Drive it home? up to about 18 bales so far so if you've guessed 20 bales uh, you better guess a little higher Well, he's back at it. Got the key fixed that you broke. Well, it didn't break. I think it fell out, which was a little odd. It was just gone. <clears throat> the key was gone out of the shaft and the uh, sprocket that was attached to it. I don't know, it was just gone. So we pulled the cover and then we uh, found a new key, put it in, and we got it back going. And then uh, Ethan wanted to run, so I'm letting him run. Because this is the first time uh, bailing with a 7495 it's 180 horse it seems to 
actually bail quite well or quite strong on it um, because we had a an older 7495 that we used and that had less horse and that seemed it seemed to work it a little harder than what this one but this is a newer model 7495 so it has more horsepower so seems to be working good and uh so we're just coming up to check on him and uh, see how he's doing and some of you have, have asked where's the challenger the challenger we still have it it's usually hooked to the manure spreader almost full time now now that we have the 7495 so uh it's still a workhorse for us so we keep using it ask what that yellow tank is on the back that is um, when we first got the baler we used to use inoculant or some type of an inoculant product which would um, keep the bales from heating and molding in the inside um, so anytime hay is above ideally you want it around 14% but anytime it was above 18% or so we would put inoculant inside the bale so um, it's just an inoculant applicator that we've never taken off the bale or we don't use it anymore we haven't used it in many many years um, we just like to make sure that we bale it dry if not we just leave them outside for a while to to sweat out Jova. Like this? We gotta lean in. You look so good over there. Smells like chicken feet. Wonder why. So I roll my window down, it's hot in here. No, I, I like it. Oh, I'm gonna roll my window All down. Right. So yeah. now we're just sitting here. What yeah. are we gonna talk about? The weather. I'm not ready. Say it again. So the reason we're I'm sitting ready, in here. I'm not ready, I gotta do a welcome first. Oh, hi everyone. Welcome to our channel. <laughs> So the reason we're sitting in the vehicle, my wife is laughing, her laughter abounds. Yeah. It probably wears Laughter is good medicine. Wears off on you. But, uh. Let's hope so. 